Bienvenidos a Óptica. Nos encontramos hoy con Dana Weiss, artista canadiense que visita nuestro país por tercera vez. Dana es una de las artistas canadienses más interesantes y más divertidas y su trabajo lo realiza a través de una compañía que se llama Jesus Hada Sister, que fue fundada por su abuelo en 1786. How is it that you come here to Colombia? How, how, how does it happen? You came here last year and you're here again. Yeah, I've been coming here for the last, uh, I guess, year and a half. Uh, as a, I was invited by the Alliance Francaise of Bogota uh, to do an artist residency here and just sort of study the country and then make a work of art about it. Uh, the, end, the end result was to show an art bow last year at the Coferias. Co the work you show in Arbo is, a, is very different from the work we're going to, to see tonight and, and of the work I, I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. In Arbo, I remember you showed uh, some photographs of, uh, of, of the corpse of a mm -hmm. bear. I, um, I would like you to, to, to tell us. Well, what happened when I, when I had my artist residency here, every morning I'd walk out and look at the newspaper kiosk and there was images of bloated bodies and drowned bodies and squished bodies and shot bodies and stabbed bodies and uh, I wasn't used to seeing that uh, in the press like that uh, with little sc school children walking by and grandma and grandpa. Uh, in Canada where I live uh, and in France we, the press is a lot more censored. So I was trying to comment on that without showing uh, dead body, dead human bodies. So I used the, tried to use the bear as a metaphor for, for the media and the media's representation of, uh, of violence. I would like to, to ask you some things about your life because um, I find very interesting that you started as a, as a writer mm -hmm. and, and then uh, you became an artist. I would like you to tell us Not only how was that change, but what were you doing as a writer? Mm -hmm. At the time, um, this was like about 15 years ago, I was working on a book in Ireland and was working really well on a book in Ireland. I had a publisher interested and I was producing. And, uh, and then just one day I woke up uh, and one of the chapters of the book was sort of bigger than print. It just kept sort of coming up out of the book and I was pushing it down and it'd be like coming up. And, And so I thought, okay, I'm going to draw this book. This book will be, this chapter will be drawn and then I'll go back to writing. And I'm, I never had time again to write. So it's sort of, I find that my relationship with, with writing and with art is sort of like this all the time. Sometimes there's words. Sometimes the words are bridges to, to other works. Sometimes there are no words and, and uh, I'll just make art. And then sometimes like, it's just impossible to make art. How do you start doing these, these works, the, the pills? That was when I was living first in France and didn't speak the language and just sort of was watching their culture, sort of like having an artist res residency in France. There's a pharmacy on every corner rather than a bar or a cafe. And I just started thinking about how much medicine those people take in that country. Um, and also just sort of thinking how I could maybe make my life better if I could speak French instantly, if I could uh, have friends instantly, if I could, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, be more French instantly. And so I started making pills to, instant pills for the, the kind of cures that I needed in my life. For me, it's a unique op opportunity because you are the creator of these pieces. Here is, are you gay? Is it, is it a, a tester? Yes. Mm -hmm. Urine test for men. <laughs> <laughs> I stay in love forever. This is a very special one because it needs a needle Oh, to yes, it's an inoculation, an inoculation. a daily inoculation. Um, here, here is a understand contemporary art instantly, it's just one pill. Yes. And be black immediately, it's a, it's a red pill. Yes. Um, we were talking uh, yesterday and you told me uh, two, two things I remember now. One is that uh, every, every pill responds to a situation you, you feel or a question you made to yourself. Mm -hmm. And the other one is uh, that you have today to be ahead of what, what is coming in the, mm -hmm. in the market, in the pharmaceutical market in, in, in life. 
I think there's different types of making art. There's just really a natural way of making art. My kind of way of making art is sort of more science fiction, where I spend, rather than painting uh, or uh, drawing as exercises, I read the newspaper or watch TV or read books and, uh, or speak with scientists or speak with philosophers and, and then make the art after. And um, what's happening right now, with, which has been happening forever, but I'll make a pill and two weeks later it's outdated because the press will say, in fact, the army has developed this new pill to um, work against post-traumatic stress um, for soldiers so that when they have terrible memories, they'll take a race your past pill right away and then they'll still have the memory, but they won't have the emotion connected to the memory. Um, aggression pills for soldiers, that's like already been done so many times. On the art openings and, and other public event, events, you prefer someone to rep represent you. Yeah, I often do. I, I think my, my feeling in the last couple, let's say like the last five years is sort of, with the internet, they've been making these websites where artists are graphed like the, the stock market. And so you'll one day you'll be worth this much and this is like this. And art has always been a commodity, but it's, I find it really a commodity now. So I said to myself, sell it, sell it, who can do it? Not you, you're not as pretty as maybe a car saleswoman or, uh, or someone who's trained to sell. So I have hired um, a very beautiful uh, a girl from America who speaks French, who's um, educated and smart and, uh, and a stripper. So she has a really natural ease uh, with her body and her public and she'll just sell anything. And I think it's a really interesting way to sell art because it's sort of killed off my ego, first of all, because I, I don't matter anymore. The, the work could be sold by, you know, my dad could sell the work and he, do, and he does as well. But I think it's interesting to lose your attachment as an artist to the work and let someone else play you and then let someone else play you and then it doesn't really matter. So on one level, it, it, there's a performance aspect to it, but on the second level, it's sort of a healing aspect because uh, your career is almost over because you're not doing it anymore. Someone else is playing your role. You, yeah. have, uh, you have an studio. You work with other people. Yeah. And uh, do, you, um, do you work with designers, artists? No, I hate no, designers I hate and this. artists. No, <laughs> <laughs> I really know. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I've we, I've worked one time with a designer, and that was we all had nervous breakdowns. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I make I make art alone, and the, but the rest the, the the production I would do with other people, and the sale, selling of it, it was with other people. Do you do you make these pills or I, these yeah. pills are? Yeah. No, we do that as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. all, all of them come out of the studio. Yeah. Do, do you have problems in the in the airport? I only have I like only that? have problems in the airport. Well, I had to travel with something like three kilos of fake drugs into Colombia. Can you can you imagine? <laughs> like I'm the only person in the world that would do this. Mm -hmm. And they uh, X-rayed my suitcases, and I just I've just learned to really uh, control my thoughts and pretend I'm invisible, and I dress like my mom when I'm at the airport. So that it looks, it just, you know, goes through. But I've been arrested, I've been uh, escorted out of countries, uh, but I always get invited back, which is nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we hope you, you can come again because your, your visit is very short, mm -hmm. as I understand. You're going to uh, Cali now? Um, Cali soon, uh, Cartagena, and uh, another city nearby that I won't dare pronounce. And Valladolid? Yes. Yeah. And you're going to exhibit there? Yeah. So people can see the, the pills? In, yeah. You know, and and some other pieces, yeah. Excellent. And when, when are you going to show your work in Bogota again? Um, very soon. Very soon. Yes. And, and more work. Has, uh, has the, the idea of Colombia changed during, during the last year? It has changed during the last three months. Yeah. It, it's a... Uh, even the press, like my ideas about Columbia have changed and also the press, I've noticed the things that I was looking at aren't, if the, it, they're not the same anymore, they're, they're gentler. Today there was a body bag on one of them, they were carrying uh, someone out. But in general, the, it's a lot more normal, the covers of the magazines or the, mm -hmm. or the press. Um, and it, there's, it's getting more cleaned up and more modern and, and that's in three months. Mm -hmm. Or six months, actually I'm lying, that's six months. But it's an amazing change. I would like to thank you again. 
for for stay, staying with us. And thank you us, very much. And for your time and uh, for being so generous with your work. That's very kind, thank you. En los últimos años, nuestro país se ha convertido en un destino cada vez más interesante para artistas internacionales como Dana Wise. Gracias por acompañarnos, los esperamos en el próximo episodio de Óptica.